so that I can have contentment. That's satisfaction and happiness by definition. Who wants more than that? What more are we looking for than satisfaction and happiness? We need to find that contentment in the Lord that, that provides the satisfaction and the happiness that the fisherman had before the world came along and tried to distract him of a better way to get where he already was. Because when we go out and we seek to do things the way the world teaches us to do it, there's no contentment, there's no satisfaction, and there's no gain. The Bible says, what the good would it do a man to gain the whole world? And there's a soul. See, the whole world is available to us. The whole world, there's so much that God wants to do in your life. But we have to learn to be with content. Like Paul said, in whatever state, so whatever state I'm in, wherever I'm at, if I'm busy as I can be and I can't keep track of things and God's got me going 100 miles an hour, I'm still just as content as I am when I'm waiting on Him to give me direction. Content. Knowing who I'm counting on, the means that I'm counting on, and the confidence in the means that I have to be able to accomplish the goals that He has set before me. Not the goals that I set, or not the goals the world sets for me, but the goals that God has set before me. I have the confidence in the means that I want to get it done, and the means I'm going to use is Him. It's all for His purpose. It's all for His plan. It's all for what He's doing in your life. That you would be confident because of so many things that He's done. When we look back at this church and all the things that God has done to this church, how can you not be confident? How can you not just trust everything that He tells you? Because everything He's ever told us has come to fruition. Everything He's ever told us has blessed us. So why would we not continue forward? Amen. We continue to move in the direction that He tells us. He continues to allow us to minister in Alaska and now in Mexico and, and Kansas and all over the place. The church is huge. And he gives us opportunities to go meet others and go minister there and go minister there and go do that over there. Opportunities to see how big he is and how many lives he works through. And to meet people that the very first time you meet him, they just wrap their arms around you because your spirit's me. The spirit of God recognizes another spirit of God. And when Daryl met this pastor up there, Daryl said immediately when I met him, the Lord told me, this man needs help, and you need help. And, and, and right away, we think, well, how am I going to help a guy uh, north, an hour north of Gallup build a church? We can begin to rationalize, and we begin to put the world in front of it and, and find out a way that we can't do it. But when we hear God say, I need you to go do that, we just say, yes, sir. Just tell me how I do it. Just leave your truck and turn it home. Go get a truck. That'll do it. Just like we did when we started on the billboard. We were going to go get some poles. From, we had our plan. We were going to go get some old wooden poles from ED4. We were going to dig holes and put them out there. We were going to nail plywood on it. And the first time the wind blew it, all blown out the <laughs> desert. We were out there doing it again. And the Lord told me very clearly and very plainly, if you're going to build a, 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 a billboard and put my word on it, you go full force all the way first class. Yeah, you don't do it halfway. And he did, and he provided everything we needed to be able to do that. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Anyway, so that's the story. That's, 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 that's how contentment comes. That's how we find contentment, is being confident that whatever God tells me to do, he's going to provide the way to do it. But i got to remember to ask the boss. i got to remember to ask who's in charge. Okay, how do, I know you want me to do that. I'm confident in it. Now you just show me how I do it. And when the day comes, it's time for you to start doing that. He'll say, okay, today, go get the truck and get started. And then we go do that. You know, we have to apply this contentment that we find and the confidence that we have in Christ in every situation of our life. Like Paul talked about, whether, whether things are good or whether things are bad or whether things are up or whether things are down, I, I maintain that contentment. My focus is on what God is doing in my life. My focus is not on the things that look like they're not going right. My focus needs to be on the one that's going to allow me to achieve what he called me to do. Even when it looks like it's not going to happen. Even when it looks like I'm not going to survive. No matter how it looks, I know I can count on the one that has called me to do it. To see me through all the way to the end. 
He doesn't leave you halfway through the job. He doesn't leave you halfway through the process. He gets it done. Daryl come back and he said, you know, he said there was only three of us that went up there. And he said, I shot a framing nail through my thumb. And he said, another one of the guys shot a ripping staple through his finger. And he said, we still did it in nine days. And he said, I don't even know how we got it done in nine days. And after nine days, we stopped back and said, wow, it's done. Because God did it. They just perceived and went forward each morning and each day as God would lead them. And at the end of nine days, it was finished. And he said, I know God's going to finish it. I just don't know how. So I come back home and I'm going to wait. Contentment. Go to Psalm 16. In verse 8 through 11. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My, fl my flesh also shall rest at home. For though I will not leave my soul, for thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of my life, and thy presence is the fullness of joy, and thy right hand there is pleasures forevermore. How much better can you say? I have buried the Lord in my heart. I know I have confidence and I have contentment in every situation that I come to because I know He's going to take me through it. I know no matter what happens, there's a good on the other end. If I keep my focus where it belongs, I can have contentment. In the busiest of times and in the most relaxed of times, I can be content because I have Jesus in my life and I trust in Him. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how, no matter what goes on, I can trust Him. Seeking the whole world will only produce what I've already, and just what the fishermen had already realized. Seeking the world will only produce what you already have. There's nothing more to gain by going out and seeking the world. You find yourself, and I can attest to that so many times over and over, going out, going to make myself a retirement, and five or six years later, I'm right back at square one. And I go try again, and five or six years later, I'm back at square one. And after about three trips, I said, okay, I'm not getting something right. Because the world has nothing to offer. You start out to seek the world and the things of the world, you're going to find yourself right back at square one. Amen. With nothing at all. I knew a guy in Texas that I worked for for a few years. He was a, he started out, he was a carpenter. He'd get up in the morning and show up at work and he put his nail bags on just like everybody else. Had a hammer hitting him in the knee all the time, had a bag full of nails, tape measure all the time. I mean, just regular carpenter every day. Well, uh, him and a buddy of his come across this land that came up for sale, an old, an old ranch. And it had one old house and it had a barn. So the two of them paired up and they bought the place and they hired some of us to go out and help them and we remodeled the house. So one of them moved in the house and we took the barn, put trusses on it and converted it to a house and the other one moved in that house, Bill and Jim. And they became contractors. They went and got a contractor's license. And they started building apartments and they started building houses and they, and they just, they, things were going good and it was booming. It was a big time in Dallas and we built a lot of apartments and we built a, a motel or two. We built a couple of restaurants and they were making good money and they had a lot of money. And they bought some property south of Dallas down in Red Oak, a little community down there, and they built a new motel called the Red Oak Inn. And behind it, they built two brand new houses for themselves. And, and Jim was pretty well into country music and knew a lot of people. And when there was a country music artist in Dallas, they would stay out at the Red Oak Inn. And they had special plays. And I mean, they just was going good. And all, in the midst of all of this, the company, a development company, bought the land right across from them. They had, uh, I think, 13 or 14 acres. Right across from them and put in a golf course. And another development company come and said, we want to buy that property you got over there. We're going to put big fancy houses over there right next to the golf course. Bill told me they made a smooth million dollars on that property, clear and free. We built a great big house. It was a. Uh, they hired ten of us, ten of their, ten of the, the contractors, the subcontractors that they had, and they got this job to build this house out by Longview, Texas, for a man that was pretty wealthy. And this house was a little over, I think it was a little over twenty-five thousand square feet. 
The mates quarters was was about 2,200 square feet. The bottom floor ceiling was 13.9. It had a 12,000 pound marble tub upstairs that we had to build. I mean, it was just elaborate. And Bill and Jim made another smooth million dollars. Well, I quit working for them and lost contact with them. And the man that we built that big mansion for out in, in, in Longview passed away. And I seen it in the paper that uh, that Mr. Thornton had passed away. And I thought, well, it'd be good to get a hold of all the guys that helped build the house and go to his his service, go to his funeral. Well, I got a hold of Bill and Jim's nephew. And I said, Chuck, I said, where's Bill and Jim? I need to get a hold of them. Oh, they're at work. I said, where are they working? Well, they're working as carpenters. They had lost everything. They were getting up in the morning, putting their nail bags on, going to a construction job, and they had driving nails on them. All those years and all that money, and guess where they were? Right back at square one. All the world has to offer is what you already have. Everything that you have in Christ is eternal. It will never go away. You seek the world, you'll get nothing. You seek God, you'll get everything. You'll get a life of contentment. You'll get a life that provides what the world can. But we've got to seek the one that's going to provide the means for us to achieve the goals that he sets before us. God Almighty. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. This is the part of this scripture. Now, you've heard that part many, many times. God will not tempt me with more than I can stand, and you stop right there. But the, the finish of the, back, the last part of that verse says, but will make with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you will be able to bear it. He won't tempt you more than you can be tempted, but with the temptation, he'll create a way for you to get out of it. He'll create a way for you to bear it. Yes. Well, we, we hear that so many times. Well, the Bible says God won't tempt me with, with more than I can handle. I didn't know he tried. I didn't know I could handle so much. You can't. By yourself. But if you remember who's telling you that the temptation that comes, you, well, through the temptation, there's a way to bear it. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that puts things in place in your life so that seven or eight or nine or ten years down the road and something happens, you go, wow, that was God all that time. There was God to put us together at the billboard to get that done. It wasn't nothing to do with the billboard. It's great that it's there and it's great that the Ten Commandments are on it for everybody comes in and out of Arizona. City. That's great. But that wasn't what God wanted to put up a billboard. He was building a relationship so he could build a church later on. And who knows what else he's going to do. Because now he's building a relationship with the church in northern New Mexico. And we don't know what he's going to do with all of that relationship. It's not about the billboard. It's not about the church building. It's about doing what God tells us to do so that he can bless our life. He's building his church. Not just one little building in Arizona City. That church reaches out further than you can imagine. And he shows us how big it is. And he shows us what he can do through us just being obedient to him telling us, go do this. Go get them pews. I could have said, I don't need no pews. I don't got no place to put them. I'm sorry, give them to somebody else. And somebody else would have got the blessing. <laughs> don't turn them down. Uh -uh, no way. And whenever I said, yeah, we'll take them, I told him this. I said, I don't know why I said that. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. God knew. He knew there was going to be a need. And he knew that he wanted to bless this little church for being obedient. And allowing us to see what God could do through obedience. And within all of that, we find some contentment, satisfaction, and happiness. My spirit was so excited last night when I got off the phone, I couldn't even contain myself. Amen. God did something again. Once again, he showed up. Once again, he said, look, I was putting this all together so you could be part of it. Satisfaction and happiness. Contentment. That's the contentment that the Bible talks about. 
Not a contentment that says, well, I'm good where I'm at. I ain't moving. No, a contentment of continuing to seek out God and watch Him provide the satisfaction and happiness that you're looking for. That's contentment. We got a couple of songs. We're going to do thing. Oscar's here with me. We're going to do a couple of songs for you. Be content to know that the God that has started a good work in you will finish it until the day of his return. That's his promise to us. That's his promise of who he is. And how he works. That we can have contentment. That we can have a joy. That the world just can't even figure out. Because they're looking for an explanation for everything that happens. The there is no explanation. There's only obedience. God wants to bless your life. You All you got to do is be obedient to Him. <laughs> well, I'm reaching out to you, dear Lord. with him that, that you can be content and, and confident in him. We find the satisfaction and the happiness that the Bible talks about. There's a battle out there that, that we all encounter every day. There's temptations that come into every life, every day, and every night. But in that temptation is the way out. In order to achieve and to acquire and to be able to walk in the confidence and the contentment of Christ, we have to make that choice. We have to make a decision that I can live in the way the world has always led me or I can begin to live a life in the way that Christ is. He wants to build you up. He wants to lift you up. He wants to bless your life with a contentment the world knows nothing about. But you have to choose. You have to make a decision that my life, I need to turn over to him. That he would lead and he would guide. You can make that decision right here, right now, this morning. You can stand up and walk up here and we'll pray together right here at this altar. You can ask Jesus to come into your life. To forgive you of every sin. To give you a confidence and a contentment of knowing that you have eternal life. Something that can never be taken away. Seeking God provides everything. Seeking the world provides nothing. If you're here this morning, 
and you'd like to give your life over to Jesus and allow him to begin to work in your